Hello YouTube, I just wanted to do a short uh, kind of smaller video for the subscribers who are more interested in things of the Unix or Bash realm. And specifically I wanted to talk a little bit about the find command, which in my opinion is one of the essential parts of the Unix toolkit. If you really want to get things done on a Unix system, you have to have at least a moderate grasp of the find command and its features. And so I thought I'd demonstrate some of those with an example today. Let's say that I want to see what files I've edited in the past week. I can do that with the find command. Now personally on my system, I have three uh, main directories in my, in my home directory. Dropbox, Music, and Nixcasts, which is where I keep the project and video files for these. Um, for these YouTube videos and music is where I store my music and I keep those in my home directory because they are too large to put into Dropbox um, but inside Dropbox I store everything else of course there's many other services um, I may be uh, breaking some of the open source fans hearts by using uh, Dropbox since there's other utilities you can use that are open source and um, that you can set up on your own server. I just haven't taken the time to do that and Dropbox is very convenient. And I store uh, pretty much everything else in my life inside of this folder. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is if I had edited any files recently they would be inside of this folder. So to search that folder for files that I've recently edited we could do a find on the Dropbox folder. If I was inside the Dropbox folder, of course, this would just be find dot. And uh, then we can specify that we want the type to be a file so that our, our search results exclude directories that might match. And uh, specifically, I want to look for files that are text files or markdown files, which I always uh, I always use the MD or TXT uh, extension. So for instance, if I wanted to search just for MD files, I could do something like name star.md, and this would match all the uh, markdown files in my Dropbox folder. Uh, however, if I wanted to do either MD or TXT, then I'd have to use a re uh, regex pattern. Um, and I, to do that, I could do something like regex uh, dot star would match uh, zero or more of any character, and then I can match a literal dot, and then have a group that marches md or this is the or operator txt, and that will mar uh, match both txt and uh, md files. And to further uh, rule that down to only ones that I've seen or that I've uh, modified in the past seven days. I can use the M time for modified time and uh, to go back seven days I just specify minus seven. So M time takes an argument and that argument is minus seven. And these will be the files that I have edited that end with txt or md in the past seven days, so not that many of them actually. And uh, you can see that there's some here that are from my Dropbox uh, cache folder, which is basically files that I've deleted, and I don't want those. So to get rid of those, I can do a path, and I can say Dropbox, star Dropbox star, and that will match only those files. And to kind of put a not in front of that, you can either do a backslash, backslash exclamation point. And the reason you need the backs, 
backslash is because the exclamation point is a special character in um, in bash but I prefer to use the dash not even though it's not as POSIX compliant apparently I think it's easier to read so if I use the not path Dropbox then that will exclude uh, the ones that had Dropbox somewhere in their path so now I'm only getting the txt and md files that don't have Dropbox in their path and that I've edited in the past seven days then let's say I want to take a look at these files in my editor well one way you could do this is you could use a print zero and pass it to xargs and use zero you see that a lot on different uh, you know, command line utility hint and tip websites and things um, and many people also use the exec uh, option in, in find and it's, it's very useful I, I seldom see it used this way though and that's with the uh, plus operator usually it ends with either a uh, semicolon or a backslash semicolon you can also use the plus operator, which uh, if we look and find, let's see if we can figure out where it is here. Let's search for exec. No, not that one. This one. And you see right here, exec command uh, plus. So this variant runs the specified command on the selected files, but the command line is built by appending each selected file at the end. So it's kind of like xargs in that it will line up all the files as arguments to whatever command you specify. And the, the uh, results of your find show up as these curly brackets. And if you surround that by quotes, then the results will be surrounded by quotes so that if they have spaces in them or whatnot, those will be preserved. And you can then use the plus operator to line it up as a command. So let's say, for example, I did the echo command like this then it would just echo them all out on one line because it's putting them as arguments but I could also do this with vim and this would open all of these files up into my arg list so I can do args and this will show all the files in my arg list and then I can use the next command to view the rest of them but they're all loaded in my in my, uh, they're all loaded as buffers in Vim already. All right now, I'm using a fuzzy file finder to to kind of walk through them. But this is a really easy, nice way to kind of look look through uh, recent files that you've seen. Of course, you don't want to have to type this out every time that you uh, want to edit recent files. So we could take this command and I just hit control X control E to open it up in an editor and then I'll just yank it and I can move over to my bash RC or let's do you can do E uh, sorry colon E for editing in Vim, in Vim and then do uh, the tilde for your home directory and then edit your bash RC and then at the end I can come in here and just uh, and uh, paste what I've what I've yanked from the other temporary buffer that I was editing the command with. And then we could do something like a recent and uh, let me just fix this real quick. So I just uh, said recent and the, put curly braces around it and then I'm gonna indent this and I don't want the dot command here because I want to search my Dropbox folder every time I use this command regardless of what directory I'm in and uh, all of this stuff remains true except perhaps I would like to specify how how many days back I'd like to go so I can use a dollar one here and that will read in the first ar uh, argument from the recent command in my m time variable here so it, when I uh, save this, and uh, let me close out of here, let me make sure that our, our changes got saved here, and they did. So now I can source my bash rc file. Oops, I need to do 
this, source my batch RC file, and then I can do recent seven. Oops, I did not specify exactly where Dropbox is because I am silly. So it's in my home directory. I'll need to source my batch RC again, and now I can type recent seven, and that will uh, that will load them into my into Vim. I could also do recent 10 and that would go back 10 days. So now there's even more files. Well, not really. But I could do 20 and there would be more files. Many, many, much more files. So uh, just something I wanted to share real quick. Short video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, and there will be more to come. Hope you'll have a great week. Bye.